Today was AMD's event, and wow, we saw it coming, but it was still really impressive. Ryzen 5000 is here, and even if you watched the event, there are some things they didn't discuss. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with the specs real quick. The 5950X is the new monster. It keeps the same amount of cores and threads as last gen at 16 cores and 32 threads. It also features both better base and boost clocks at 3.5 gigahertz base and up to 4.9 gigahertz boost. According to AMD, it is up to 27% faster in content creation, but it's a little misleading since it's only on a singular benchmark. But in gaming, the 25% plus average performance upgrade is a lot more believable. It has a 105 watt TDP and it sports 64 megabytes of L3 cache and 8 megabytes of L2. Then there's the 5900X, the new 12 core 24 thread king. It clocks in at 3.7 gigahertz base which is 100 megahertz lower than the 3900XT but it surpasses the XT in boost with 4.8 gigahertz. Anyways, clocks don't really matter when you consider the 19% IPC uplift. It also has a 105 watt TDP and it sports 64 megabytes of L3 cache and six megabytes of L2. Going down, we have the 5800X, the eight core 16 thread CPU you might have been waiting for. Clocks wise, it has the same boost as the 3800 XT at 4.7 gigahertz, but is a 100 megahertz lower at base. Once again, the IPC makes up for that, so it doesn't really matter. It has a 105 watt TDP, 32 megabytes of L3 cache, and four megabytes of L2. Before I get to the 5600X, here's something you might not know. All of the above processors do not come with a cooling solution. This is odd since the last generation 3900X also had a 105 watt TDP, but came with a Wraith Prism RGB cooler. And this is not because of the turbo power, since both CPUs, the 3900X and 5900X, have a turbo power limit of 142 watts. This brings us to the 5600X. It's the new 6 core 12 thread CPU with a base clock of 3.7 gigahertz and a boost of 4.6. That is a lower base than last gen, but a considerable 200 megahertz upgrade on the boost clock. It has a 65 watt TDP, 32 megabytes of L3 cache, and 3 megabytes of L2. This one does come with a cool Cooler, the Wraith Stealth, the worst inbox cooler that AMD has to offer. The 3600X at least came with a Wraith Spire. Looks like AMD might be either phasing out their cooling solution for the PC building market or they're keeping them for the upcoming APUs. Price wise, well, all of the processors are $50 more than the last gen. 5950X is at $799, 5900X at $549, 5800X at $449, and finally the 5600X at $299. While I understand the $50 more for the 12 and 16 cores, it starts to get a bit much for the 8 core and especially for the 6 core 5600X, considering that's a 20% increase over the last generation. All of the processors will be released on November 5th, but what about availability? Well, when asked about it, AMD declined to comment on availability, but they did say that they've been working hard with retailers and distributors to share best practice solutions when it comes to dealing with bots and scalpers. That's to avoid a repeat of other highly anticipated hardware launches. You know, like the 3080. Another fun fact, the I.O. die is the exact same as the Ryzen 3000 series. That means memory support, PCIe lanes, and NVMe slash SATA support is the same. And lastly, we got a preview of Big Navi. Dr. Sue pulled out the card to show it to us, and uh, wait a second, it still doesn't look like the first render that the company showed us. Anyways, we got some performance numbers. Borderlands on badass quality runs at 61 FPS, Modern Warfare on Ultra is at 88 FPS, and Gears of War 5 on Ultra runs at 73 FPS. How does this compare to the 3080 you might ask? Well, it's pretty close. According to benchmarks from Eurogamer and Hexes.net, the RX 6000 card is around 95% of the way there. It's a little disappointing, but here's my hope. 
the RTX 3080 doesn't seem to overclock that well. I mean, Nvidia's own GPU boost algorithm seemed to push these cards so high that they would start crashing to desktop in games. Nvidia had to fix, aka lower the boost limit to prevent those issues. If AMD can give us the same overclocking capabilities that we saw on the RX 5700 series, then it will surpass the RTX 3080. What do you guys think? Are you impressed by Big Navi? Let me know down below. And that's pretty much it for my coverage of the event. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.